Hey guys, have you ever tried a hot press watercolor paper? Well, this week we tested out some hot press watercolor paper in one of my Facebook groups and we came out with some fun and unexpected results. I originally was not going to paint flowers, but these just turned into a little bouquet in front of my eye. And this is what playing does for you. So let's check it out. Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly Chassie Fine Art. Welcome to my channel. I'm here to help you explore your inner artist with less perfectionism and more play. So let's get started. Hey guys, so I'm going to be using Arches watercolor paper now. Arches is a little bit more pricier than some of the others, but let me tell you, this stuff has been around since 1492. These guys know what they're doing. They know how to make paper. And I wanted to show you a close up here of what the paper looks like inside you can see that it has a very very smooth texture very soft to the touch and if I come in closer this is just a demo that I had done you can see that it's got no texture in here again the colors lay nicely on here and I have a very soft looking wash great for detailing this in turn is the cold press paper where you can see there's a lot more texture going on for this one and you can see the tooth that this has versus the hot press well, I'll be using the 140 pound hot press this is an 11 by 14 inch sheet and it is 100% cotton which is really important with watercolors because it's going to absorb and do a really good job um, with your colors and penetrating the paper. Um, easy to add washes to without tearing or linting because it doesn't have any of those other materials in there. People use it with watercolor, with gouache, with ink, and even acrylic. And this one happens to have the 20 sheets and they're glued on all four sides. So it's really easy to use, take with you. Um, and you don't have to worry about stretching the paper first because it's attached to the block. So I'm going to test it out here. I am just showing you, I added some water to it and I want you to see how smooth of a surface this stuff has. And it, you can see that it's not moving really, really well. It wants to stay where it's at. It really absorbs the watercolor. So for me, and you can see if I don't put the water down, I just go ahead and put some paints on here. These things aren't moving. It just beads up and just kind of sits there. Adding a little bit more water. I could get it to drip a little bit, but it's still, it's not, not working the way I want it to. Not like, like it does with cold press for me. So a lot of folks will use this type of paper for portraits. They'll use it for flowers if you're doing some really fine and detailed work. Again, great for dotting and for adding just a little bit of color in here. I'm going to dot in some more color. You can see it doesn't get that, that blend or that poof of color that um, you'll get with like the cold press paper. So it's one of those things that, you know, a lot of artists that are working with pen and ink really love it because it holds it still. I am adding a second layer of wash here, light wash to this one. Again, it makes a really pretty flower. I, I, I like it. It's just different for me with the smooth surface. A lot of times when I'm doing water or if I'm doing rocks and things like that, I want that texture of the paper. So for me, the smooth press is um, just totally different. So depending on who you are as an artist, you might like it, you might not like it. But as I said, great for like pen and ink. And I actually added some pen and ink to this when I was finished. But uh, first of all, I'm going to dry this one. You can see once it dries, it's beautifully smooth. It smooths right out. I do have a little bit of a line there where I added some more water to it. So that's why I'm going to go in with the pen and ink for this one. But again, it does have a beautiful softening effect. So I'm going to try some ink. I want to see what the ink's going to do. This is actually ink by Barisa. It is water-based ink, not alcohol ink. And you can see it's really vibrant. Once I get the water in there and dot a little bit of that ink back into it, it's quite bright, quite vibrant. A little bit different than what the watercolor did. And for watercolors, I was using, by the way, Winsor Newton, the artist grade quality watercolor paints for that. So I thought I was going to start with an iris. It didn't quite work out. It has an iris, so it's my made up flower. I don't know what kind of flower it is, but it's really pretty. <laughs> beautiful colors and I'm actually working with a little bit of regular watercolor in there with the ink just to see how those would work out together and they moved perfectly together. I did find the ink just blended nicely very smooth there's no granulation there so it's a lot smoother than with watercolor paint and this is another little 
sort of flower that I've decided to go with with my little test blob that I have here. And again, adding a little bit of that purple, which is ink, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and just playing. I'm also testing out to see if I can lift it and the uh, ink is staining a little bit more as it's a little bit more vibrant than what the watercolor is. You can lift with this and I did do a little lifting with that as well. It worked well and the pen and ink worked beautifully on top of that nice smooth surface. It was really easy to to do the ink with. Thought uh, trying out maybe some watercolor pens would be really nice on this but my white Posca pen and a black Sharpie did an awesome job. So I just kind of played around with it, added a little bit more texture and some petals in there and just had some fun with it. I'll put a link down below in the description box for you. If you liked the video, please make sure to click that like button and give it a share if you have some friends or some folks that love creativity. And we will see you in the next one. Have a great week.